On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we talk with Charity Gibson, the new rising star, and she tells us about how she deals with change and also the best advice she's ever gotten. Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossman, and I am super excited today to have a repeat guest with me, uh, Charity Gibson, who's the new National Accounts Coordinator with Peerless. But most recently, I mean, literally before, since I've asked these questions to you, you have been named as a rising star in our industry, so congratulations. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining I know, it's very funny. The rising star like, did you already have that? Yeah. <laughs> No, but it's really cool. Any time you get uh, recognition, I think it's pretty cool and humbling and all that stuff. So good for you. Thank you very much. You bet. So I want to jump in here. Um, we kind of touched on it there. You've taken on a new role um, kind of in the industry with Peerless. And I, I think change can sometimes be scary for a lot of people. Um, so what made you decide to take the leap and how did you know it was time? Well, so I put um, a very interesting perception on change. I guess from a very young age, I have been forced to change unknowingly. So my mom would move me from town to town. I moved 21 times in 20 years as a kid. Um, very transient in that case. We would just kind of go wherever somebody would take us in. If we had a place to stay or somewhere to live, they would you know, be that home for us. And so... Uh, a lot of times that was different places in Tucson where I grew up. Sometimes that meant you know, picking up and moving once was Cheyenne, Wyoming. Another time was Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Hmm. So I've been kind of all over um, the country, which is fun. Hmm. Uh, with that, you're changing schools, you get new friend groups, you just have to become you know, adaptable. Hmm. And so for me, change is the only constant. It's very comfortable for me. Okay. And um, the one thing that I was very diligent about when I started Green Banana was that I don't want to be the person that jumps from job to job. I want to figure out how to stay, how to make it work, how to accomplish my goals. And so for a long time, I was very hesitant. Even when I wanted to quit, I tried to fire myself every day um, and kept coming back to work and rehiring myself. So I was that for persistence. But um, past that, I actually was talking to Mark Graham about two and a half years ago now. And we were talking about something my business advisor said. All of this speaking, going on tour, being at every trade show, and being um, a personality within the industry is what I love to do. But when you're a distributor doing those types of things, one, you're teaching your competition how to sell against you mm -hmm. and compete in your space and giving away trade secrets, which is fine. But we love to do that because it elevates the industry as a whole. Um, but at the same time, it's not revenue generating. Mm -hmm. And so talking to the business advisor... He said, you know, if you want to continue doing this, quit promo kitchen, quit traveling on the you know, trade show circuit, and go monetize your speaking. Go speak to the AMAs and Ad Week and do these things uh, on the national level with whatever the opportunity to do business when it's done. Right. And uh, I can't quit promo because yeah. you guys are my family, and this industry is like my family, and so... It really became passion over paycheck at that point, and I didn't know what to do. So, what do I was I supposed to go to the supplier side, or what have you? I ended up going to Green Banana Social after talking with my grandma a little bit and using Facebook and Twitter, and all those things that I love to do on a daily basis um, to really put those to work for me and my family. Mm. And so that was the beginning of it. And after taking on a couple of clients, went and worked with Next, and they were fortunate. Uh, or I was fortunate to go on with them and get my first, uh, my toes wet on the supplier side of things is their West Coast representation, and it was a huge change. So um, learning supplier ways of doing things and manufacturing, because they're a manufacturing facility as well, and getting to understand the intricacies of the supply chain that distributors really have a very limited knowledge of, even after 15 years. Yeah. And um, knowing when it was time to change from next to peerless one they gave me the opportunity and you can't turn that down um they're a fantastic company to work for dan edge and his crew um winning awards for being the greatest company to work for and it's no joke there's no fabrication or any fluff there or anything you walk in and all of a sudden you're family so if you ever have a chance to get to the peerless facility in newark walk in 
and you're just walking with open arms, like from the from the office staff to the out in the um, production facility. Super cool, um, but also scalability. I think um, there was the position that I was in with Next um, was we weren't able to scale. There's a level of growth and having a reputation that's national and putting me in a box when I've never had a box in my entire life, pretty difficult thing. So when Dan said, you have no box, go fly and be free. And instead of having to duck, I, you know, be a duck, I could be an eagle, as John Maxwell says, <laughs> I couldn't turn it down. So it, it was, there was no other opportunity or no other, um, there wasn't a choice. It was just say yes. So. That's, cool. that's a long-winded explanation for that. <laughs> no, it's really good though. Congrats! That's um, <clears throat> it's it's exciting whenever you do get to take on uh, new challenges or new roles. And so, in it, it's, when you're starting a new business or new role like that, what do you think you or anybody else who's doing that needs to focus on? Well, so this is a really interesting question mm -hmm. because I think when you come to a new position, you immediately want to start doing and immediately want to start producing results and immediately just want to jump in with both hands and I think sometimes we forget to um, aim twice and shoot once mm. so coming into this role you know obviously it was important for me to figure out what Dan wanted for me um, and for his team and for you know the future of the company both short term and long term so I think it's important to focus on just taking a minute to breathe and assessing the situation and um, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And then um, I have here, get, get a baseline, form a plan, um, attack that plan, and then assess it again, adjust the, the plan or adjust the method maybe, and then rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. And um, it's difficult to get a baseline and be able to measure those results, but it's imperative because how else are you gonna measure your success unless you know the rules are going by. So, mm -hmm. As much as I don't like rules and I'm not a big fan of structure, that, you know, it's just a really good, um, I think it's been a good formula. And it's, you know, just working. You have to know where you are so that you know where you're going and you can look back and see where you've been. That's cool. That's good. I like that. Great advice. Kind of listen, figure out what you're doing, and then create the vision. Um, so, um, final question for you. Um, I know you mentioned Promo Kitchen a little bit earlier, um, and Promo Kitchen is all about mentorship. So the final question kind of made that was this is where this comes from is, um, you know, we all have mentors. So what was some of the best advice you've ever gotten in business? I've gotten so much advice in business and um, I'm sure that there's probably a million cliches mm -hmm. that sure. I could potentially ever give to somebody. Um I don't know, you're a big, very, big Gary Vee fan, so the whole just hustle harder kind of an, you know, thing, that there's, you don't ever want to get outworked, mm. and um, the idea that, um, what did, I can't even think of the actual phrase right now, and I had it in my head all morning long, but the um, talent... Mm. Help me out with this yeah, one. <laughs> so, so the, the concept being that that you can outwork talent. You can outwork talent. Yeah. yeah, and and um, I'm a talented person, mm -hmm. and the thought that someone could outwork me and you know could shine even brighter by working harder and being even more committed gave me that much more more motivation because yeah, that's right. Sometimes we rest on our laurels being no limit. I I do I I get things very quickly. I understand concepts, and sometimes it's like okay, well. It's, through it and then I wonder why some people are reaching goals faster than me or you know getting farther ahead than I am and it's because they don't quit and they don't stop and they you know it's like they just sit there and they paddle harder and they push harder and they go further and so that um, that definitely is it and then um, something that I have thought about and I'm sure that I've heard it as kind of like an amalgamation of everything that's like coming into me but the idea that when you're brought into an organization to make change, you can sometimes have the, um, you get to hearing what everybody's doing and how everything is working, and all of a sudden you start to conform because that's the way that it was, and you don't want to ruffle feathers. It becomes uncomfortable to be the change maker, and to just remember you're hired to bring change. Mm -hmm. So 
be comfortable being that change maker, even if it's an island, Innovation Island is a lonely place, be okay being lonely and you know, keep on innovating and making change and going against the current because that's what's going to bring the difference. Otherwise, you're going to continue getting those same results. So. Mm, I like it. That's really good stuff. Well, cool, Charity. You've answered my question. Uh, I give everybody the chance to ask me a question if you've got one. I do, okay. finally. Last time I didn't have one, and it ended up being some stupid thing about your favorite beer or something in the comments. <laughs> no, but today I actually do. Okay. So my question for you is, if you could trade places with one person in the industry for a week, who would that be and why? Mm, man, that's a good question. Um, yes. <laughs> no, that's really good. I haven't been asked that before. If I could trade places with one person in the industry, who would it be and why? Um, there's several, right? Um, so the, the, and I'll just give you a rapid fire of the people that pop into my head. I think it would be super interesting to walk in Mark Graham's shoes. I think it would be very interesting to walk in Danny Rosen's shoes, Bobby Lehu. But if I were, if I were, and of course I have to say Bill Petrie cause you know, <laughs> There's a bro bromance there, uh, but uh, actually the person. Pretty spooky shoes too. Those Van Halen Chucks he rocks. Yeah, I mean, right? and that, <laughs> but I think the person that actually pops into my head and I say, okay, the person I'd like, Paul Bellantone. That would probably be the person. I think it would be super interesting to see the industry through his eyes. Um, uh, I like to think I have perspective, but I know Paul has perspective, and yeah. so I think that would probably be, you know, after I've kissed all those rear ends. Leading up to it, um, I think it's I think Paul Bell, Bellantone's probably the the answer. So, good question. Yeah, fun. That's a fun one. That's cool. Well, you know, you, you want like me? I can lend you a pair of heels for the day. You, you know, it's my funny. Shoes for a week. Yeah, it's funny. I actually thought of you, but I, I don't think I can pull off your outfits. So that was. Uh. The, <laughs> That was the deal. So, Thanks. no, that's cool. So, thank you so much, Charity. I really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we'll do it again sometime. Okay. Sounds great. Have a good one. Cool. Well, that wraps up this delivering marketing joy. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.